Okay, I'll make this as quick as possible. This has to do with what is a proxy in the world of tricking. If you look up what a proxy, um, a proxy is essentially when you get, for example, Kojo's Trick Lab comes in and talks to, um, let's say a brand here in Toronto called Toronto Tricking. And uh, Kojo's like, look, I want you to, um, to take ideas I want you to collect information from the people in your community and I want you to tell me what is happening and I want you to, um, you know, we're going to look for things that we can use and we're going to take credit for that. And then you get people like Kojo's Trick Lab who comes in and makes Toronto Tricking a proxy of Kojo's Trick Lab. You know, Temple is a good example of a proxy that works on behalf of Kojo's Trick Lab. Uh, the organizer is KTL, the judge is KTL, the competitors, mostly KTL, you know, uh, in that family, right? Uh, so Temple Gathering, which is a French event, is actually a proxy that's working on behalf of the United Kingdom. Kerbit Collective is another example. Um, it's when Toronto Tricking and uh, Bay Area Hustle Team, uh, who else? Oh, Air Handlers Montreal, Cloud Kicks, sorry, Cloud, Cloud City, whatever, out in Vancouver, Victoria, BC, whatever. It's when they worked together and they were taking Canadian ideas and in order to gain approval from America, they were taking and allocating credit for other people's contributions, other people's work onto themselves. And uh, rather than upholding the history, they were falsifying the history. And rather than speaking the truth to the Canadian public, they lied to the faces of the Canadian public and to the Canadian community here in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, etc. So you get um, essentially an organization that is anti-Canadian. It's a Canadian organization that's anti-Canadian that works on behalf of the United States of America, trying to gain approval from the United States. And a lot of these organizations work together. They're not necessarily exclusive from one another. They all work together in order to, to benefit themselves. Uh, and none of them are in this category of brands. I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna put Adrenaline, I'm gonna put probably Loop Kicks, um, Tumdra. What's a, what are good brands that represent their country and aren't um, that that play by the rules for the most part I mean no single brand is perfect but some brands are in the negative category of corruption and some brands are in the positive category that uphold the truth that uphold that do their best to allocate credit to the original sources um, that carry on the tradition of their community so what makes a community legit is when, uh, let's say you get a friendship group, or okay, let me use Toronto as an example. Toronto has like three, four generations of Toronto trickers. Now it's different because America has its, um, America has its own system here in Toronto. It's called Vertigo. And Vertigo, obviously that ties into the United States of America. Um, you know, so th there's a, a cooperation there between Vertigo, Kerbit, Kojo Strict Lab, etc. Bay Area Hustle Team, Bing Bang Boys, you know, Vertigo is involved in all of that and they're all involved in each other's work. Again, uh, non-national, right? But Toronto has its own culture and its own history that's separate from America, right? This isn't to say that um, just because people are from different countries that they have to hate each other. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's a respectful distance, a respectful difference in terms of culture that separate one community from a different community. And it's so important to have your own unique identity as separate from other cultures because that's what makes you special. And uh, so, for example, um, within Toronto, within Toronto, Anime Inspired Dreams, Utopia Tricking, that's, the, that's what ties me to every generation. That's what ties me to my predecessors and the people that came before them. Uh, all of us have been inspired by anime. I know it's kind of goofy, but that's just something that is a commonality 
between us that we all kind of understand. And uh, all of us get into that mindset and want to become like our anime inspired heroes. And so I was able to carry on the tradition of my predecessors and really make that my culture. That's what, you know, when I hosted the Saiyan gathering um, or, you know, my t-shirt designs and stuff like that, or just the fact that, as you can see, I'm an anime VTuber right now. Uh, that's, that's the whole point is that I'm the image of my country. This is what, this is the product of my culture for generations. And I carry on the actual history of my country. It's, it's all on my Instagram. You can get the actual history, the actual story of Toronto, Canada. Now, again, we do have an American system here in Toronto and the American system intends to benefit off of Canadians and benefit off of um, our identity, essentially, and taking credit for work that does not belong to them. And uh, for people who don't understand how that's, how that's uh, exploitative and corrupting, uh, it defeats the whole purpose of competition because competition is supposed to uh, do honor and do justice. You know, a judge isn't supposed to be somebody who takes credit away from a deserving individual and allocates it onto their preferred athlete. That's, that's the definition of corruption. So judges are supposed to do the right thing, not supposed to do the wrong thing. When I caught the CEO of Kojo's Trick Lab himself denying history, taking credit for even my ideas, when you go to, um, what's his, uh, you know, he, one of his guys on numerous occasions, I remember when even uh, Shido Zen, one of the founders of the Toronto Tricking Community contacted me and was like, hey, who's this, sh this uh, guy from Koji's Trick Lab asking about, uh, you know, the fact that, because Shido Zen hosted the first gathering ever. And that was at a time when I was talking about it, which means that one of Kojo's guys was paying attention to my channel and wanted to get information that could benefit Kojo's Trick Lab, not knowing that what he's doing compromises his morals because rather than citing sources, you know, taking, taking inspiration from another athlete and then going and replicating that idea in order to bring glory to Kojo's Trick Lab, even though that idea came from another source, de defeats the whole purpose of artistic integrity. And in the world of competition, you're supposed to allocate credit to the original source. You're not supposed to skew it. So Kojo's Trick Lab has tried to deny even my history and the things that I've done for my country and the fact he's tried to reduce my work to nothing, even though he's been caught stealing ideas from me. Even uh, the ultimate tricker, the guy used a, a leaderboard on a, 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 a plane with you know space and stars, which is the same exact thing that I've been building for years with my ranking system. So the fact that Kojo's Trick Lab takes ideas from other people and has absolutely no integrity can t tells you that this guy, that this organization is corrupt. And, you know, he has people, proxies, you know, the, the title of this video is like, what is a proxy? A proxy is an organization that fights on behalf of another country. So smaller countries fighting that are funded, that are fighting on behalf of a larger country. And you get, you know, civil conflict as a result. When, when bigger countries come in and they fund politicians in other countries, and then those politicians enact the will of their, the people that are funding them, what essentially is happening is that that country is now corrupted and what they're trying to do, they're doing not to benefit their own citizens, but to benefit a larger power. So it completely defeats the purpose of competition. It totally undermines your integrity. Um, you know, it's your morals. It means that you have pretty low morals if that's how you have to build yourself. Anybody who has ever built their own brand would know that you wouldn't want someone to come along to start taking your ideas. You want to prove that your ideas are yours. That's why you have a brand is to mark your ideas to say, hey, I came up with this myself. You know, back in 2011, I was already using a sun and moon in my drawings. And then when I started my brand officially in 2018, I kept that. 
same same exact principle you know every everything about my brand i if there is inspiration that i draw from someone else i give them credit i make sure that that's known if someone does video work for me i give them credit if i get inspiration from other trickers i pay tribute i say thank you i make tribute samplers i find a way to allocate credit where it's due because it's not right for me to try to take credit for something that i did not do i say thank you to my heroes and i eventually became my own tricker by by representing the culture of my community and taking that to the next level, taking it further than any Canadian has and ever probably will ever have because I'm going to keep going where most people are led in the wrong direction. I'm going to continue to push in the right direction, a direction that leads towards better values, something that is in line with the UN's charter, essentially. If people want to know what it is that I'm going for here, just take a look at the UN Charter, look at all the problems that exist in the world, and you'll find that the reason why the UN Charter exists is to help to make the world a better place and to, to stop many of the conflicts that are happening in the world, the reasons why those conflicts happen. And when you extrapolate the offenses, the criminal offenses that um, organizations or countries or entities employ, you'll see that in, this, in our world of tricking, organizations are responsible for carrying out those same things, but on a smaller scale. And if we, if we catch that type of behavior now and correct it, we can produce an entire generation and a younger generation that does not repeat the same mistakes as people who are older than us, who are too prideful to, sw to stop what they're doing, even if it's wrong, you know, money, for a lot of people, people can't say no to money. I can say no to money. A lot, Just about every work that I do, all the work that I've been doing for tricking is for the benefit of tricking. I'm not making money off of this. This is all volunteer work. It, yeah, I used to, you know, host gatherings and stuff like that, so small amounts of money. But, you know, the work that I've been doing for the last few years is all 100% philanthropic. I'm just here to pass on, to pay it forward, to help out. Um, but a lot of these organizations, they're all motivated by money. And uh, they might tell you that they're not, but 100% they are. It's, it's all for self-serving purposes. And it has nothing to do with representing their nation, but is, in fact, just to self-serve. It's not about protecting the original culture, because most of these people want to take other people's ideas or to wash over other people's culture. There's no respect for other people's homes. People want to go in to communities that other people built and then take ownership over other people's communities in order to further their own cause. And they don't understand why other people would be offended by that. If you built your own community, if you built your own brand, how would you feel if someone came in and wanted to take your shit? It wouldn't feel very good. There has to be, um, there, there has to be a communication and there has to be an agreement and cooperation if people are gonna collab, but that's not what people do. Some people are more forceful, more sneaky, more underhanded and more corrupting in the way that they operate. And so a lot of the things in the UN's charter like being against imperialism, for example, imperialism is what people utilize in order to establish a proxy and get a proxy to act on their behalf. That's called, that, the usage of proxies is called imperialism. You can Google all this stuff, by the way. And so the point is, is that the world is working, and, and the UN is also working with anti-corruption in competitions, by the way. You know, uh, Interpol, for example. Uh, there's a lot of work that's being done to squash um, corrupt organizations that are corrupting competitions because you know, people make money from corrupt competitions. People, people's brands, people's businesses go up if they can set it up for them to win. You know what I mean? But it all comes at the expense of competition itself. And it all comes at the expense of your country. People sacrifice their integrity. People sacrifice their pride and their honor as countrymen. You know, there's nothing wrong with believing in your own country. This has nothing to do, by the way, with anyone's skin color. It has nothing to do with anyone's religious beliefs. This has everything to do with, are you carrying on the tradition of your culture, of your tricking culture, 
paying it forward and protecting that? Or are you selling it out? Or are you trying to take something that doesn't belong to you? Because there are, there are people who are on the positive, the good end of the spectrum that intend to honor their country. And then there are people that want to dishonor the country. They want to dishonor someone else's country or get ahead by any means necessary, even if it comes at the expense of their pride and their integrity. And again, competition, I don't care if people are making tutorials, I don't care if people are trying to sell whatever, I understand that. But integrity is rank number one and honor is, is so important when it comes to battling. I can't understand why people would want to even be in this category unless the money is good enough for people to turn a blind eye and say, you know what, who cares about upholding the values that make a victory worthwhile as long as I benefit financially, that's all that matters. As long as, pe and, and by the way, these people won't just jump out and say that they're, what they're doing is wrong. What they're gonna try to do is either buy people, they'll pay people off, or they'll do it in such a sneaky and deceptive way that it doesn't even look like they're to blame at all. But I've caught these people, I've caught them red-handed, doing things that they're not supposed to, and how that corrupts competition, how people cheat in competitions. And so these people, these organizations are not here to bring pride and glory to their country, they're here to benefit themselves. What I hope for, and when people, when people enter onto a stage and they wear their flag on their back, they're there to represent their country, which means that as a battler, you're there to, to bring glory. So that's the type of stuff that I like to see. I like to see when people are fighting for their country and to represent their community that they, that gave birth to them, so to speak. You know, whether they're paying respect to the, the people, the elders of their community that have helped to shape them, the people that they're grateful towards. You know, there's, there's a lot of international inspiration that I take, certainly. And my way of saying thank you, my way of saying thank you is by upholding. I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not really affiliated with, for example, Team Invincible. Yeah, we've had them out as special guests here in Toronto, but it's not like it's not like I'm a part of their team or anything. I'm here saying thank you to them. Same with the Three Amigos. When I first got started tricking, these guys were the main storyline of the sport. Anise was really the most popular one, but when it looks when it comes to battling, you know, it's Daniel Graham. Dan Daniel Graham is the champion battler representing his generation. I'm just trying to say thank you to these people. I'm not gonna try to bury their history, but that's not what everyone represents. So the work that I do here, why do I do the work that I'm doing is well, is to establish what makes a win make you feel like gold and what's going to bring shame to your country. What's going to bring pride, upholding good values and, and overcoming your opponents and carrying on the tradition of your country, the, the positive traditions, you know, things that are rooted in virtues and goodness and then people then there's people who just want to win at any cost and there's only one category that i admire and i can tell you that it's not it's not having to play dirty or having to cheat to get ahead because that's only going to bring you shame you want to feel proud of yourself and if you feel proud of yourself having to sneak or cheat a victory that's how you know you're a bad guy that's how you know you're one of the bad guys. If you feel proud of yourself that the only way that you're able to defeat your opponent is through having to cheat, that's, you, that's the universe telling you that you're the bad guy. You wanna be proud of yourself by becoming the best version of yourself. You wanna grow from having no experience at all to becoming the symbol of your nation, to becoming the representative of your culture for your country. That's rank number one status. You want to achieve rank number one status. That's the, be that's the ideal goal of every battler. And that's what I promote. I don't promote becoming nothing more than just a proxy for some other organization just so you can make money. Money is not everything. A lot of my competition has sold their souls just to get ahead. And I'm proud of myself to say that I became the very representation of my culture in my country. That's worth, you can't buy that. 
you know, there's some things in life that you cannot buy and you have to earn it. You have to genuinely earn it. I can't just buy the Japanese language. I had to spend hours upon hours upon hours teaching myself how to speak Japanese. That's something that you earn. You can't just buy everything in life. You could have all the money in the world and you could never buy my position in life because I, I fucking earned it. I took it by overcoming my opponents and by upholding what I genuinely believe is the vision of a champion, by beating them, but also by fighting for fairness in competitions and not advocating for corruption. And that's where every single one in Canada, every single one of my opponents fell compared to me. And so this is why I am very, very proud. And this is why I, this, I, I invented this model. I'm proud of my work. I'm, of course, still, you know, it's still under construction, but I'm proud of this. You know, it's inspired by the Japanese. Basically, that's the, re, the regalia of, of Japanese culture. It's spiritual weapons. I know this, is, this sounds, for people who don't understand, too, it's not really related to tricking, but I drew inspiration from an outside source and implemented that into my brand just as the, the very foundation of tricking is, has always been to, to take outside inspiration and to make it a part of tricking. So, you know, you're supposed to be unique like that, right? You're supposed to set yourself apart, be different. And I found my own little category. I created my own little lane and I'm proud of that. But the point is, the point that I'm trying to make, sorry for the long video, but the reason why it's so important is pride versus shame. At the end of the day, it's pride versus shame. And are you going to be proud of yourself for what you're doing? Or are you going to be ashamed of yourself? Are you becoming a better version of yourself? Are you growing? Are you expanding as time goes on? Or are you shrinking? Are you becoming nothing more than just a proxy who's fighting on behalf of some other power that just pays you to do what they tell you to do? You know, there's no, you can't be the champion of anything if if what you represent is a lie, you know, you, if you wear your flag, but you're taking orders from another country, are, you're not really representing your flag, are you? It's a, it's a false image that people put up. So you have to have dignity and you have to have self-respect. Not everyone has that. I'm, I'm advocating that people appreciate their own country, appreciate their own community. No community is perfect, but at least if you don't agree, create your own brand. That's what I did. And carry on, carry on the spirit. And if there is no, if, if your country doesn't have its own distinct culture, then find something, do something different, invent, become an inventor, become original in some way, and then make that the, the specialty of your of your hometown. Make that your specialty. Again, people are gonna come in, they're gonna try and take credit for your ideas. All you'd have to do is just show people that these guys are frauds, they're just scam artists. You know, Kerbit Collective has basically dissolved. Most of the members have, have shrunk and most of them live in shame at this point. Most of them have gone private or whatever and they, they live in shame. And some people don't have shame. The money or whatever benefits they get from it, they just don't care. Not everybody has a conscience. Not everybody has a good heart. But the point is, is let's uphold higher standards. Let's make sure that victories are worth something, okay? You're going to take a victory. You're going to be proud of yourself. That's what we want for athletes. Uh, innocent people who don't know anything are going to come into the sport. They're going to dream big. They're going to want to win. And it's our duty and our responsibility to make sure that they're going to be given a fair trial, fair treatment, and nobody, again, you're going to have to face that these organizations are going to prevent the future generation from succeeding because they're just going to either swallow them up, take their ideas, or try and throw a label onto them. And rather than people fighting for their own country, rather than people, you know, remaining loyal to, to where they come from and to the people who, who raise them, whether it's their own family, their friends, you know, people, people, People change up. People change up for various reasons. I understand that money is an, a driving factor for most people, but I'm trying to say that the trophy is worth so much more. There are things in life that money cannot buy, 
you want to you want to take your w's you want to become the best version of yourself genuinely not perceptively not deceptively you don't want to trick people into thinking anything you want to genuinely become the best version and that doesn't mean that you're not going to struggle or go through down periods that doesn't mean you're not going to be injured or have difficulty those difficulties those those problems are are how you improve yourself great people are great because they overcome impossible odds not because they're given you know funding from some other country and then over in artificially inflated overhyped etc you know people play on deception no no i'm saying we got to play on reality focus on becoming objectively better than everyone else and uphold the values that we know will bring pride not shame to your country